Thanks for joining us for the launch of our latest release of Squared Up Dashboard Server. Uh, and today it's all about the new features of 5.4. Um, and for each release, we like to focus on a theme. Uh, and today with 5.4, our theme is bring answers to the surface. Um, and release 5.4 is all about helping you find answers to a problem when you're troubleshooting something on a dashboard, uh, but also to surface key metrics in, in new ways for your stakeholders and and on your world boards as well. We are live today. Uh, my name is Vincent, Vincent Babin. I am a product manager at Squared Up, and, and I'll set the stage for 5.4, uh, but the best part is seeing it in action. So that's where we've got Sean today. Hey, Sean, how are you doing? I am doing good. Thank you for having me today. You're welcome. Uh, and we're also joined by our solutions team. Uh, they are on the chat and they will be answering your questions today in real time. Uh, so please, yeah, just just use the, the chat window um, and uh, and yeah, we'll we'll uh, be summarizing your questions, some of them, some of your questions at the end of this webinar uh, later. All right, uh, let's uh, let's get going. So um, before we, we dive into 5.4, just a quick reminder of our portfolio. Uh, for those of you that are, that are not familiar with Squared Up, uh, we have our dashboard server product that comes in three editions. The community edition, uh, same sort of great dashboard, same free price, uh, but with a clear focus on our community. Uh, and the community edition sits beside our uh, flagship Azure and SCUM editions, which uh, offer native and, and rich integrations to Azure and SCUM. But today is about 5.4, um, and we have a number of exciting new features to reveal. Um, so we, here is a, a, a quick look at what we are going to show you today. We have a new data source for ODBC, and that's to let you connect uh, more data, more sources on your dashboards to help you build better visualization. Uh, we have improved uh, the grid tile with some highly anticipated enhancements. Um, and we are also excited to announce a new visualization for SCOM and Azure editions. Uh, and we call it Surface. More, more on that later. Um, <clears throat> and last but not least, uh, our community uh, have been uh, busy creating and sharing uh, their dashboards. And so we really want to highlight some of the latest dashboard that they've, uh, they've created in, in the recent, uh, recent weeks. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's dive in. Let's start with a new ODBC data source. Uh, essentially, it lets you uh, instantly visualize any data from virtually any database. Now, the main challenge uh, today when building a dashboard is for anyone to get to the data easily wherever that data is located. From Oracle, Postgre, MySQL to, to many more databases, you can now dashboard your most important metrics by connecting directly um, to your ODBC compliant database using any dynamic SQL query. And that's really unlike any other dashboards. Um, with dashboard servers, there is no programming, there is no complex setup required. Uh, we'll see that in a minute from Sean, but basically you'll just be setting up your connection to your DBC database, enter your SQL query, and, and here you go, pretty much. Uh, and, and we think that's going to open up a number of use cases from, from, from our customers. Um, you might be heavily invested in Oracle databases. Uh, perhaps one of your dev team is using MySQL to store uh, application metrics. Uh, or maybe you're going through a migration project where you're moving from one database to the next. And so we'll be able to able to help you here. Um, so with a new ODBC data source, uh, you'll be able to build dashboard, observe just about any data metrics where that, wherever that data is. Sean will show us uh, some of those use cases in action in a minute or two. But before we do that, uh, we also want to introduce you to uh, some major enhancements that we are also making to the grid tile. Now, the grid tile is, is used by virtually um, everyone that comes to use uh, Squared Up dashboards. Uh, if you need to keep a pulse on your SCOM alerts or maybe display a list of logs or events, whether that's from IIS or Splunk, uh, the grid tile is, is essential. You can't, you can't really do without the grid tile on the, on the dashboard. Um, but many customers have told us how it can sometimes be difficult just to get the display right, uh, but also to navigate through all of that data. Um, and so we've taken your, your feedback on board uh, and we are pleased to announce the following improvements. Um, so you can now search, uh, filter and sort anywhere. 
so if you're looking for a group of alerts, maybe a specific event or specific list of ma matching log entries, that's not going to be second nature and, and, and easy. Uh, we've also added some uh, new ways to optimize how, how the grid tiles look on any screens. Uh, we've removed the unnecessary blank spaces between columns, we've added a slider to increase or decrease the text size, um, but also given you the ability to resize column. Um, oh, and we have also added paging as well, which is going to come really handy. I think uh, one of Sean's favorite feature that you're again going to see very, very shortly. Um, so yeah, whether you need to search through your logs or do some troubleshooting, maybe just to narrow down to a specific event, that's causing you trouble, uh, or maybe you just want to display the grid on the wall screen for, for anyone to be able to read, then those en en enhancements should, uh, should, should have you covered, basically. Um, and all of those improvements are available in any grid time in, in the product, and that's including SCOM alerts, Azure alerts, and, and, and so on as well. Right, as promised, I'm going to hand over to Sean. Uh, Sean, you've had a, a chance to to use 5.4 for a while, so yeah, why don't you why don't you show us what you've been up to? Okay, so uh, this particular dashboard is our AdventureWorks dashboard that we put out to the um, gallery just recently, and it's it's one of those dashboards that it it's very simple. You just load up Microsoft's test data, fire up a squared up dashboard, point it at your test data, and here is an example of all the things that you can do. But why is this relevant? to the new ODBC functionality is, is the question. So the use case that I was looking at here was, what if we migrated that data from SQL Server to a Postgres database or Postgre database? What, what impact would that have to your organization? Suddenly your data, your dashboards would break. You wouldn't have that same insight. So what I wanted to do was just walk through the changes that were made and then show what happened. Um, so again, we're looking at the SQL dashboard and we have uh, a connection to that SQL server. So one of the major changes that we made was that we now have in integrations, a SQL integration tile. So you click SQL, give it a name, Postgres or Postgre. Um, and then in the old way, or in the old dashboard, you would actually have connection strings in all of your tiles. Now, since it's at the integration, you can set your connection string once, and it then propagates to all of your tiles. Or if you want to do ODBC, you set your connection string there. You click Save, and then it becomes available to you in your active providers. So as you can see here, I have a new Postgres provider. So let me go back to the database. <clears throat> so here, I'm right now choosing SQL, but if I wanted, I could choose Postgres. So behind the scenes, I migrated the data to Postgres. Once it was there, created my integration and recreated the exact same dashboard. So, Is that using, Sean, that's using the same, same SQL query basically um, from one, so do, and, and do you support, like say, do you support also proprietary SQL languages? Uh, does it work with those ones? Uh, you're right, it was, it was a little bit of sleight of hand there, but that's a good question. So let's, let's actually address that. So if you're using straight ANSI SQL, no changes are necessary because ANSI SQL will work across all of your databases. But SQL Server has T-SQL. So let's take a look at that. So in that particular query, this is a little piece of T-SQL. That did not work in Postgres. So if I go to my query here, bulk of the query is the same. Whoop. Didn't mean to scroll like that, but here in Postgres, I have to actually change current date equal minus interval 60. So yes, there were some changes, but the bulk of the SQL code did work. There's those um, pieces that you need for the different targets. So when you go to Oracle, they have PL SQL. There's going to be changes there too, but the majority of your code will work because most of the time it's just the ANSI SQL. Mm -hmm. um, it gets more difficult when you're dealing with more complex queries, of course, but uh, the fact is you can connect because in the old way, we would actually use the SQL servers, linked data servers to connect to other databases. And if you've ever done that, this is going to be heaven for you. So essentially that's going to save you 
save you a bit of save you some time and get get to your data more more quickly more instantly i guess more natively i suppose yes right? absolutely absolutely do you did you did you have to to configure anything on the server for like an odbc data source or is does it come does it come uh, out of the uh, process uh, for, uh, that, excellent thank you for reminding me um when so administrators in the old days or even currently you would have to go onto the local machine, sign on on as the system, set up the ODPC so that the application can then talk to the other servers. And in this particular case, Squared Up takes care of all of that, so it just passes it through. So you do not have to log on to the local machine to set up those ODPC connections, which is huge for an administrator because they can go to the integration pane, change the password, change the connection string, all of the data, all of the dashboards and tiles that point to that configuration will then be updated. So if you move from one SQL server to another, not a problem. If you move from SQL server to a different database technology, update the different tweaks for that particular language, but for the most part, your dashboards will work. That's really cool. It's really key. So yeah. as you're growing, um, your investment is definitely still maintained. Hmm. <clears throat> So um, cool. Any other questions on that one? Is uh, we'll move to my favorite demo, which is the grid view. So for this particular dashboard, you'll notice I have no grid because I wanted to actually show that uh, from the start here. So uh, when so let me let me actually go here to the script here. So this is a simple PowerShell script. I just wanted to show that I chose a PowerShell grid. Default run as, so I'm just targeting the local box. I'm setting a start, an end time, and a result right to the grid. So, oh, and of course, I didn't prepare my demo properly. So most of the time when you would do that simple script, your results would go off page because a lot of data comes back and you're, you've spent five, six hours on a dashboard and suddenly, something comes through and your dashboard just goes you have this huge result list well as vincent mentioned paging which i think is just the coolest thing ever is the most awesome new feature because you can now limit those results let me just limit those to 20. because now when you spend the time to line up the dashboard it will actually stay lined up so you can create better panels for your admins to use for troubleshooting or better wall panels um, as Vincent mentioned, we can move columns around, which is huge. And the really cool part is if you do that in edit mode, like this, and then we click done and publish, we then leave the dashboard, go back to the dashboard, it will remember those columns. That's huge. So when you're actually spending the time to just like get all those details right for a particular dashboard having the columns just that's just so awesome and then multi lines available now um, as you mentioned in your lead-in we can now sort and so if you wanted to actually then sort and then search uh, let's do event code so we can see that if we just wanted to do 4005 for that same event uh, offline and the cool part well okay we're only showing 20 here so that stays on screen but let me delete that let's do one that um, success oh they're all informational <laughs> <laughs> when you're dealing with live data sometimes you get caught with that so there's success and so uh, again, we get to count. So it's only still showing the first 20. Uh, we have 39. And as we go, it, until you get to the 20, there'll be a count there. That's really nice. Search is uh, so very, very snappy, Sean. And uh, so what, yes. what if you wanted uh, maybe that uh, that table or a table to be uh, visible, say, on an open access full board, like uh, I mentioned earlier, you can increase the text text yep. size and do, do other things. How, how might you... Uh, how might you do that? I knew, I knew you were going to ask that. So I created this wall board. And mm -hmm. so again, limited my results, showed the, the event logs, put some counts, and now I can put that up into the wall board if I wanted to. Um, 
but I guess what you're probably going to say is when this is on the wall board, it, it's, it's just small. It's too small. <laughs> it just doesn't work. So we're going to just quickly go into edit mode. We're going to do display. We're going to do fill, which is going to make the donut huge. Let's make that right there. Give it a done. I'm not going to worry about this other donut for the moment. We're going to come here to this grid. We're going to go to our grid option. We're going to have them expand automatically. And then we're going to change our font size to be something much more readable. And now when you publish that, now that's a wall board you can read from 25 feet away. Oh, yes. <laughs> Definitely. Cool. So a lot, a lot better for the wall board scenarios in a, in a NOC or an in internal operation center because um, you want your people to be able to see the information from a distance. Mm -hmm. so, and then bring that back up there. And again, when you're in a NOC and they're working with events, so usually it's just up on the screen, but suddenly something comes up, you still got your search, so they can mouse over to that particular monitor and then take a look at um, network. And then you can start to show from a distance. So everybody that's gathered around that monitor, you can drill into those kind of events. That's pretty cool and a, a really much needed change. Nice, Sean, thank you. Uh, let's, uh, let's take a look at the next next feature. Is that all right? I'm gonna take back control. Sharing. Right, okay, so uh, yeah, as, as we said earlier, we've got something else to show you, um, and uh, that is called Surface. Surface is a new uh, visualization we are announcing today. So let's take a quick quick look uh, at what that is. So with the Surface style, uh, you'll be able to build uh, stunning looking dashboards, as you can hopefully see from, from the screenshot he here we have. Essentially what it lets you do is to overlay your most uh, important SCOM or Azure metrics freely uh, using new display components. Uh, and that can be uh, those, those display components, those new metrics can be added over any image background, that could be a world map, that could be an architecture diagram, or, or, or whatever it is, it is you can you can think of. And the Surface style comes with a number of configuration options as well. That's going to let you customize the look and feel and, and essentially unleash uh, uh, your creativity. So, but let's let's take a look at some some use cases, and then and then Sean will 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 walk you through um, how you might want to use it in in the product. So. You know, in, in, in this first example here, um, the Surface style is actually used as a full screen dashboard. And that example helps you uh, spot a problem a little bit more quickly. Uh, it's perfect typically for your operation centers and, and it looks really cool as well. Um, or maybe you already have a topology diagram and then what you can do is to easily overlay your IT metrics um, to perhaps show cause and effect when you're troubleshooting. Um, or maybe you need a dashboard for, for your boss and you need a little bit of uh, something that looks a little bit more um, uh, wrapped up and, 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 and sort of like uh, concise and, and summarized. Um, so that the Surface will, will let you do that because you can have any image and, and sort of any metric on any background, uh, you'd be able to, to do that. And if your boss, uh, your stakeholder, whoever wants to drill down from, from these views, they can also uh, obviously still, still do that. Um, and in the last example, um, that's uh, actually what we are highlighting here is, is how you can just about use any image and add context to your metrics. Uh, and that, that example is inspired by a customer who actually needed to show the number of Wi-Fi uh, connections on every floor in their office. And the Surface style is a prime, prime example of how you can, you can do that here. Um, and really, that's, that's the flexibility that comes with the Surface style. We, we really can't wait to see how you are going to uh, unleash your creativity and sort of hopefully come up with some really really uh, great use cases. Uh, but to inspire you, uh, I'm going to, uh, again, hand over to you, Sean, and yeah, take, take it away. Show us what, uh, what you've been doing with the Surface Time. We should be seeing the event wall board we, from before. So I'm kind of like gonna do that big reveal. Just, I love this dashboard. Uh, as Vincent showed in his use cases, uh, there was that just really nice big square. So just looking at this briefly, this is, the surface tile and it's one image and then we overlay on top of that image objects um, and then the, the metrics that come from those objects so i'm going to just click the uh gear wheel here and go into edit mode 
and show you that these are just floating on top of that image. So you can place them wherever you would like them to be, just as simple as here, here, and here like that. And then I can come up here and just say publish, and then there it is. And so I can then post that or publish that to open access and then go to town. Um, that, that's, that's just really cool. So that, that opens up a lot of different cool things. So I'm gonna just walk through the next example. Um, here we have a wall board that like a database team put together. And so as you can see, the, the new surface tile, there's two of them here, um, they can show metrics in a different visual way. So in, in the old version or the old way that you could do it would be for a matrix tile. You would just show two rows. But this, you can put those that metric for this particular object and this object on the screen for that big visual like here. I'm looking at these two things. Here's my status. Here are a couple metrics that relate to that. And then since that's on a wall board, you can then wrap that up and then just give that to your CIO. So in this case, I took the same use case, except this time for three different teams. So database over here on the left, uh, operations manager servers in the middle, web interface on the right, and then here at the top, we have all the different SLAs. Each of these are different pieces of the infrastructure that you can then roll up to a different dashboard. And if you take that even a step further, you can wrap that all up and then actually let your teams manage those dashboards and then they can't impact a different dashboard. So in this case, if you make a change to that first wall board, it would reflect in this particular dashboard. So a really neat way of working with the surface tile to present information in a new impactful way. Um, just, yeah, I, I, I just love this new tile. Um, and I, I'm, I'm looking forward to showing you different ways of looking at the data. So in the third um, scenario that Vincent mentioned was just like dashboards for your boss. So we get to the tree view. So again, singular image in the background. I'm gonna click the design mode here. That is not where I wanted to go. As you recover back, Sean, uh, it'd be great to see the uh... The, the, the flexibility. I can see that there are some tick boxes going on here. You can hide yes. and show certain metrics. Yes. Tell us more about that and, and how might you be able to add a, a custom metric maybe as well? So, okay. So in this particular case, again, same one image in the background, you can drag and drop wherever you want. In this particular case, there's only one status. So there isn't really much to see with this particular object. But mm -hmm. down here, I've added the uh, computer objects. If I click the down arrow here, you'll see that we have this perspective box. Um, just like with our matrix row tile, you can create custom perspectives, save them to a file, and they become available for use here. And I can change the metrics from the windows, which we're seeing here to IIS. And as you can see, they update. Um, or I could, nope, I'll let it change back. There we go, and just do windows. So in this particular case, I have over here databases, I'm showing database metrics. Here I'm showing Windows metrics. Over here I'm showing IIS metrics. The tick boxes, if I didn't want to show IP address because I'm sharing this more broadly, I can unclick the little IP box. Let me then come up here to done, and you'll see that those rows disappear. So we give you lots of flexibility to manage how that's viewed on screen. Um, we're gonna to get to some of these options in just a moment. Um, yeah, but the cool part is, is you can add other things or you can remove things and you can change pretty much everything about these different tiles. And presumably, I mean, we'll see that maybe on your next example, you can yes, do, I, depending I on whether you're light mode or dark mode, I mean, so surface tile would work either way, but there's, sometimes it looks better in light mode, sometimes in dark mode, depends on your image you have yes. access to opacity and size and all of those layout as well, I guess that yeah. you can. You can so figure out. you just, you, you, it was like the perfect lead in. It's like you knew what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in this particular case, we had a floor plan. So in my old institution, we were monitoring um, web interfaces. And so we had all of that data coming into Ops Manager. Um, so we have different floor plans. And what I did on this particular diagram is just show, I'm going to the design mode here, um, 
let me actually, let me start this over. So as you can see, I'm showing number of connections and bandwidth. And you can still see the map through the image. So I mean, once I enter the design here, you'll see that we can change the object size for each of the different, um, for the object on top of the image. You can change the opacity of those items. So you can make it really bright if you have a dark image, and you can make it really dark for a white image. We can change the labels so that they can be horizontal, they can be on the left, they can be right. We can change the names. We're gonna, I'm gonna, I have another di uh, example where the name is missing. We can do it with collapse mode, which I'll show in just a second. You have a lot of really neat ways of presenting the information. So in this case, we started with connections and bandwidth. So the use case here would be put this up on a wall board. You could then look quickly and say, oh, this particular connection, this particular Wi-Fi point had four connections and its bandwidth is normal. Let me switch to my next example. Same map, except this time, I got rid of all of the chrome around it and just showed bandwidth for this particular um, object. For this object, I'm showing connections and bandwidth. And if we scroll down, I can throw health on these particular objects. So you can mix and match what you're looking at on the same image so that you can create a really unique view. And to take that one step further, another Wi-Fi access point, except this one is more interactive. So here's the point, and it just shows the health. If you click on it, you can then show those metrics. And again, that's live. So if I want to see that one and that one, I can hide or show what I want to look at, um, which is really cool when you have, again, uh, an IOC and a bunch of different floor plans, you can see their statuses quickly, and then when you need to drill into it, go show that information or, or drill back out of it. So, what do you think of that? Cool. Um, do you mind going back to the, to the first dashboard? Yeah, the world map shown. Uh, just, um, we, we actually have a question from the audience. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to read it out loud, loud, because that's something we were going to show anyway. Will the surface replace a Visio tile? That's a question from Robert. It seems that this might be easier to use. And uh, my, my question here was, can you resize this uh, nicely? And, and how might the surface tile compare to the Visio tile? Okay, so you, multiple questions there. Um, let's yeah. let's work those questions backwards. So, um, so resizing. This is a wall board, big image. Uh, the really nice thing about the, the the new surface tile is that it does resize. So let me just go into edit mode. I'm going to throw a column here to the right, a column here to the left, and then kind of just resize. Notice everything scales. Mm. That's huge because now you can still keep those metrics. Yes, they get really small, but this would be really nice for an infrastructure admin to look at the map and then interact with it. Whereas you could then put it on a big wall board and then it's really big for everybody to look at from a distance. So, but you can then add other metrics to the left, to the right, and you can make this more interactive if you needed to. But the fact that it resizes is really nice. When you wanna compare and contrast this versus Visio, let me, um, I wasn't thinking of actually demonstrating this, but I did put together a Visio example um, where I was just kind of just figuring out how this would work. So in this particular example, this was a, a map I put together of a, a, an actual, it's a real map, but this is um, each, all the buildings for the university that I used to work at. And so what I did was I linked each building to an object in SCOM, and then it, cha it changes color based on the health state. And then I wanted to show a building, again, from the campus, um, and, and it show its health state. So when you want to compare and contrast, Visio has a really valid use case when you're dealing with lots of objects and the shapes are really strange. So the image on the left, you have all these different objects. Now on the right, we have the surface tile. We limit you to 25. So the distinction here is if you have a really nice clean image, and you want to put statuses on top of that image, the surface tile is where you want to go because you can quickly edit the tile. We can go to the scope. 
You can see all of the different objects. You can add, you can remove, you can drag, you can drop, you can show the metrics, you can make it interactive. And it works in open access, so they can click on what you're seeing here. When you're dealing with a Visio tile, it's an SVG. You're limited by how the image lights up or not. You have to go into Visio, have to relink the object, save the SVG, re-import it into Squared Up. So you've got a little bit more overhead. So when objects change, it's more of a change control process with Visio versus the surface tile. So definitely two different use cases. There's going to be opportunities for both going forward. Um, the surface tile, though, I think it's going to alleviate like this is like the Pareto rule, 80-20. 80% 80 of your uh, your use cases are going to end up now with the surface tile because I think that really has a lot more applicability to the everyday infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, at least you, you might start with the surface tile. And if you want something a little bit more detailed, to, like the yeah. map you've got on left, maybe that becomes Visio becomes your perhaps your second best option. Right. Okay. right. Yeah. But I will say, you know, just going through like the topology, where did I the tree view? Um, this was a Visio diagram that I just I drew out mm -hmm. quick. I just pulled out all the labels, saved it, imported it. And since it was an SVG, if I change my personalization for this uh, to white mode there, and then go back to pages, you know, it still looks beautiful. I mean, that's good, yeah. <laughs> and, and I can drag the objects around, and again, I can manage them from here. And so when something changes or I retire a server, I don't have to go back to busy and change that. I just come into the image map here and surface. Service this, is, this is awesome. All right. Well, thank you, Sean. I think that's plenty of uh, plenty of hopefully of inspirations for for our audience here. Uh, so what I'll do is uh, I think we'll keep going with the presentation. I think we're almost there. Uh, and uh, great news is uh, what you've seen today. Uh, Squared up 5.4 is available uh, to download uh, as a release candidate. So if you head over to download. <coughs> excuse me, download. Squared um, you'll be able to get your get your hands on the release candidate. The GA, the general availability release, is going to be available in mid uh, February. But if you if you do go ahead and and install the release candidate, you can go go ahead and do in place upgrades, uh, and we'll give you priority support as well. And if you, if you choose to use the RC release uh, right now. Before we, uh, we wrap up, uh, we just have some news to share uh, about our community. Um, and and we're, what's awesome with our communities is how it comes together and make every member better than they can be independently when creating dashboard. It's, it's a good place, good place to, uh, to find help if you're stuck uh, or inspiration and new ideas. Uh, or just simply a leg up with templates that you can sort of reuse for yourself. Uh, what we wanted to do right now is just to highlight some, highlight, sorry, some of the most uh, recent uh, contributions from our, our community members uh, with, with more to come. Uh, so first up is a new, we've got a new Adventure Box dashboard. Um, and and what, what I like about this dashboard is each tile uh, makes use of all the latest visualizations from, uh, from, from um, the Squared of Dashboard server. It's, it's a great showcase. But more importantly, it's a really useful dashboard to use as a starting template. So if you're looking for inspiration or something to, to start from, um, then the Adventure Works is a really great, uh, great submission to the community. Um, and another one I want to call out, and we have, we've had a few requests from customers who had wanted to, <clears throat> excuse me, dashboard their Azure uh, DevOps operation. But in fact, we, our DevOps team, built their own uh, Azure DevOps dashboard. Uh, and it's using the web API uh, capability of dashboard server. And basically it gives you, or it gives them at least, and it, it can give you some performance overview of your builds and, and release pipelines as well in, in Azure DevOps. So uh, yeah, thanks thanks to everyone who's, who's contributed to, to the uh, uh, dashboard gallery in the recent recent few weeks, last few weeks. Um, and if you want to get yeah, get your hands on those dashboards, just head over to dashboards.squareup.com. Um, in fact, if you want to, if if you uh, if you love Lego as much as a, as a good dashboard, then perhaps you you may be interested to actually submit your own dashboards to uh, to our to our community. 
Um, and if you do that, you are going to um, obviously get a post in our, in our dashboard gallery um, and you'll be given yourself a chance to win some Legos as well. So again, same URL, if you go to dashboards.squadra.com, you can submit uh, your own dashboards to be published and win Legos or, or you can use a dashboard from others in the community as well. Um, you can also refer a friend um, to us. So if you uh, if you prefer a friend to download and activate the free uh, dashboard server community edition, uh, you'll be able to win some Star Wars Lego or an Amazon voucher. Uh, the URL is at the bottom right here. I'm not going to read it. It's a little bit too long, but do do take notes. Um, and yes, um, be happy to uh, send some Legos uh, Legos over to you guys. Right, I think, Sean, that's pretty much it for today. Um, but we still have, yeah, we still have some time to take a few few questions from the audience on the chat. Uh, Sean, any any questions on the chat that could get us started? Sure, I, I actually want to call out Peter. He said grid tile. Finally, yes, I, <laughs> yeah. uh, that was a huge, huge. I, I mean, I. We, it was our second feature to highlight, but I will be honest with you, it was, the, it was the one that really grabbed me for my dashboards and when I'm working with users, when they want to interact with it. So like the, from the troubleshooting perspective, the grid tile was huge. Then the second one that really got me was ODBC because I love SQL. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to call out Peter there. Um, oh, Samuel, yeah, no questions, just nice. Well, wrong company, we're squared up. Nice is a different company. Uh, does the grid tile work in open access? Yes. Uh, in fact, that's a great use case uh, now with open access. So, yes. Um, can you do HTML like code in the grid cells to use icons instead of information or color the cells? Uh, well, um, Ash answered that and he said, yes, you can. Check out the Git GitHub sample library. So, that was a, that's actually a new one on me. I thought it was possible, but I wasn't sure. Um, audio notifications. So this this has come up a couple times. I I would be interested if you would who who posted this. Uh, Matthew, um, post this. Manoj, yeah. Manoj. Yeah. Can't pronounce the first name, but um, I, I, my suggestion is post that to the community community answers forum. I'll watch for it because what I really want to know is what your use case is. When, in my experience in, in infrastructure you have multiple um, dashboards on panels. And so audio didn't make, doesn't make sense in that particular use case. So I wanna know what your use case is because there is a way to have it fire off audio locally, but it, it, it depends on where it's set up, who's logged in. And so there's more to it than just something mm -hmm. that we can push out. So um, yeah, I'd be interested to hear how that, there are two um, two questions related to uh, being able to snap uh, tiles on the surface tile. So you have the image and you have the uh, the various objects. Uh, one question is when you place a tile on an image, can it snap to all the metrics? And I think a similar question, which is if I want if I wanted to place a bunch of tiles in a line, do I have to try to manually line line them up or do they snap? So they don't snap automatically, but we have in the background we have a very narrow uh, invisible grid. So you will be able to uh, to achieve that 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 line. Uh, it, it takes a little bit little bit of work because it doesn't snap, but it is very possible to to be able to line uh, things up. Um, and I think we yeah, as we we all like a, a good square dashboard. That's probably what we are squared up. And and so yes, you can you you'll be able to to achieve that that great look and great look and feel. Um, there was a question from uh, Ruben Nigera. Um, he asked if it was possible to back up dashboards. Yes, that's all through the file system. Uh, he, we also re replied to his question directly. So uh, it was an easy one. When you share surface, do you say when you share surface, when you do use open access, is the surface style interactive or do you need to? Oh, that's different when you show a surface. So when shared, is it interactive or do you need to log in? So that, that's a question about open access, all our dashboards and any visualization that's available, whether that's some ODBC visualization or maybe surface that or any visualization can be shared via open access and, and open access does not uh, require the users to log in. Um, 
So yes, it is uh, possible to share the surface tile using open access. Um, if the user wants to then drill down uh, perhaps on a specific metric, then, then obviously they will then be taken to a login screen uh, to, to log into the application. Yeah. Cool. Um, it looks like some of the others were answered. Yeah. Uh, web API objects to the surface tile. Integrations with Oh, no, that is correct. So these have to be objects in SCOM. Uh, so the full question, so can you add web API objects to the surface tile? For example, integration with SolarWind via web API. Um, so those those would be, so this, this the surface tile for this version works with SCOM objects. So you have to have an object in SCOM. So if you use like uh, Nathan Foreman's new management pack to bring in data and it becomes an object in SCOM, then yes, you could add it to the um, uh, to, to the surface tile, but it has to be an object in SCOM. Or if you use Cookdown's connection um, tool, then all of those objects come in and they uh, they work for you in the surface tile. But if you need data from other sources in the surface tile, just reach out either via community answers or throw a ticket, and then tell us about your use case. Why would that be important? What problem would it solve? And then we will definitely consider it. A few more questions still coming actually. Uh, all the sample dashboards that were created for the demo today, would they be available? To, whatever you've shown, uh, showed, shown today, would that be available as community dashboards? Uh, that's an interesting one. We should probably look at that, see what we can make available maybe. Yeah, I didn't actually think of that, but we could certainly do it. Um, yeah. Not a big deal. Okay. I'm just going to do it a little. Okay, uh, is the search, okay, so that's, that's an important question. We had, we had that, that a few times. Is the search box available on alert pans, panes? So I think what the question is here is, is um, we have a few grid tiles in the product. We have grid tiles for PowerShell, data source for Splunk, Elasticsearch, Web API, SCOM, and Azure. And I think the question here is uh, uh, on the SCOM alert grid tile. Can you search through the grid tile? And can you can you basically do whatever Sean was was showing us? And the, the answer is yes, absolutely. Uh, on the alerts, uh, SCOM alerts, uh, grid tiles, you can search and through. That's, through a, filter, that's so a great use case for when you want to develop a dashboard to give to like, let's say your SQL admins. And so you have all of those SQL alerts that they refuse to change and you give them an alert view and then they have the search box and now they can just type in what they want to see and it will just. So yes, that's a great use case. So that works perfect. Yeah. Question for you, Sean, I think, uh, how did you make network metrics objects in SCOM to show on your Visio tile? Uh, I'm not sure you did that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I did not. Uh, they do not show in, okay. So that particular Visio diagram, uh, the buildings only show the health state. When you click on a building, it does drill in, and so you end up going to that object, and then in that object, it will show the switches, and then those switches will have um, the performance related. Mm -hmm. So you don't see it on that Visio diagram, because Visio doesn't have that ability. Now, going forward, if uh, and that was also a custom management pack that I wrote that actually reads in uh, data from a text file that was populated from another tool called Libre NMS, which was the networking tool. Um, so yeah, uh, with the surface tile, what I could do is actually take the same campus map, use the surface tile to show total throughput that was a summarization of all the different sub objects, or I could zoom in on the map to have fewer objects and then overlay with the surface tile, the, the, the throughput. But I could not do all of the buildings with the surface tile because there's A, too many objects. B, that, that map is just huge. So I would have to really zoom in on it and it just, it does, it becomes unusable. So it's, it's one of those cases that, that would be neat, but it, it just isn't usable. Got two more questions here. Uh, can Azure resource the Azure resources are they available for use in Surface dashboards? Uh, yes, <clears throat> the answer is yes. So let's just just to clarify, the Surface style works with uh, SCOM objects and Azure 
objects or resources. So yes, uh, if you're using, uh, if you have some virtual machine or if you're using squared zero edition and you have some virtual machines that you want to, to add on to the surface style as a metric, then, that, then absolutely that's, that's doable. I probably caused um, confusion there when I said it had to be an object in SCOM. It has to be an object in SCOM or Azure. Or Azure, yeah. Uh, and the last one can be a feature to download the dashboard data in image PDF format. That is a <clears throat> that's a recurring question we get from time to time. We are looking into it. It's certainly in our backlog. Uh, we are uh, yeah kicking to look at it. Uh, I can't promise when that might be available, well, but certainly the PDF. Yeah. Not Don't even show, yeah. actually, Vincent. That's not necessary. So mm -hmm. um, if if in, it, it, okay, when you're in the product, if you go to settings and then you'll see GitHub samples, it will take you to our GitHub cool. repository. I actually wrote a tool that will take snapshots of your dashboard, full sized. So if it goes off screen, it will take a snapshot of it on a schedule and it will save it off as a PDF or image. If you only need an image every once in a while, there's a way to do it with the command line with your browser today. So there's not really a need to add it to the product. Okay, cool. So I forgot that, sure, absolutely. What we need to do, we should be able to, we'll probably follow up with, uh, maybe on the community, we'll put a post, might be good to promote that uh, dashboard from the gallery, I think, sure, maybe just put the uh, put the link in the community answers and, and maybe reply directly to this as a, uh, because yeah, you've already done it, perfect. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that. Right, I think that's uh, probably all we have time for today. Uh, just gone a little bit over time, but a lot of uh, interesting questions. Uh, all right, well, thank you very much, Sean. Um, and thank you everyone for attending today. We hope you enjoyed 5.4 and happy dashboarding. Look forward to see seeing you. the uh, community answers. Bye.